it going, San Antonio? I am DJ Mighty Iris, and you're watching Wrong Side of the Tracks. This is your local spot for local music to live, breathe, rock your socks off. You get the idea. I am here with Guild. Well, some of the members from Guild, <laughs> slash, comma, the man that produced, well, mixed. He's mixing our album. Mixed the yeah. album, yes. Co-produced. So, co-produced, sorry. Sure. My, my bad. No worries. Um, so offensive. Sorry. No, we're good. So introduce yourselves. I'm Richard Evans from Guild. Will Gannon. Frank, guitarist, Guild. I like calling you Frankie. That's Can funny. I call you Frankie during the That's interview? That's fine. Okay, cool. <laughs> Thanks, Frankie. All right, so how did you guys meet? Uh, we've all met from way back in the day from San Antonio. I'm like, no, I would say more like 2001, 2002, just like okay. playing shows. Yeah, and playing shows around here. Trying okay. to promote ourselves and meet other like-minded musicians. So you were all in uh, different bands before? Oh, yeah, like he was in Emily's Gone Mad, he was in Gastro Machine. I was in Guild and at Gash Machine at one point as well. I played at an Emily's Gone Mad show. Once everyone time. knows. I think everyone's for Emily's Gone Mad. Fuck, <laughs> man. In for keyboard for Guild. John Brown alumni. is like the horror of San Antonio. I think he's just yeah. he's just been into everybody's. Louis everybody. Inbred. Yeah. You, you <laughs> figured they'd have the paychecks to go with it. Aww. No. Well, congratulations, man. We're gonna make That's fun awesome. of John Brown. Yeah, you, you have to because right yeah, <laughs> everyone knows that name. Um, okay, John. so <laughs> how long have you guys been with Guild? How long have you been together? In about, was it 06? We went out to California. Yeah, it was about 06. Yeah, we went out to California in LA. I live with these guys. Yeah. And, oh. uh, and uh, We all know each other very, very well. You seen each other naked? We're way too close. Yeah? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Maybe I, I wasn't, remember. I don't remember that. Hopefully my brain blocked that out if that happened. If there was enough <laughs> alcohol. Alcohol does crazy things. <laughs> no, it, it, yeah, we can blame the alcohol. So you've been to California. Easy. Have you been to Hollywood, Frankie? Oh yeah, most definitely. So Frankie, Frankie has I was gone like, to Hollywood. I'm here, so Very where's cool. my money? <laughs> there was no money. I Very came cool. Relax, relax. <laughs> so how many albums do you guys have? We have the one that's in the, right here. Actually, yes, right here, which was, you can, thank you, you for bringing it. Yeah. Oh, sorry. And, uh, and we are currently working on our, <laughs> and our other one right now as well. Almost yes. done. Almost done. How much time goes into making an album? Oh. It really depends, honestly. Like, when we got done with this and came back, life changed, you know? And being a creative person, you have to give yourself time to play mm. and to, like, experiment to do things instead of, like, this is what I'm going to do. Because if you can do that, then you'll end up being second-guessing everything that you're doing as opposed to just creating it, so. And then that's just writing the first part of it, and then you have to go through recording it, which can be a pain in the butt, and you're mm. just doing it over and over again, like, oh, I heard that little at the end of your word. Nah, too much tea, Richard, cut that out. Do it and record it again kind of thing. And then you go to the mixing process, so it can take some time. Okay. Some time, if you want it, like, perfect. This particular kind of second <laughs> album has been pretty much a labor of love for about two and a half, three years okay. since the last album. Um, when we were in California, I, I, I like to look at it as that this first album, Guild Self-Titled, mm -hmm. uh, was pretty much the embodiment of everyone's mood and mindset at that time. So coming back over here uh, during that time, there was a recession. And so we all came back financially just like, okay, what are we going to do now? Because we basically lived the dream. We went to California. That's very cool. You get there, you live in a big old house. You have all your friends around you. You throw some parties and everything that you would want to do, you do. And then after that, you're like, okay. Well, I got to live that dream, and I come back, and it's like, okay, so what did you learn? And that's basically where the second album kind of comes into play. Okay. It's been kind of picking and sorting out what best represented us for this new, like, reiteration of Guild. Because Guild itself has had um, probably, I don't know, probably, what, three or four incarnations yeah, before? With like, revolving members yeah, and stuff. And that was the whole mindset <laughs> behind Guild, was that everybody that came into the fold of it brought something special and new to it, whether it be a guitar line, a vocal line, a synth line, something to it. And it, it was it was meant to be exactly what the name implies, a guild, an ever-changing okay. specialty of groups. And it was like, if you were lucky enough to be in guild, then you brought something in that we all connected with at some point. You have been assimilated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've been gilded. <laughs> that, um, that's much. a right <laughs> yeah. um, Okay, so, gilded, I guess. so your sound is kind of like electronic, is that what, oh, what kind of genre? If anything, that's the one tying thing. I think that every one of us that's ever been in either Emily or Gil, mm -hmm. Gastro, or anybody that it would swing in our circle, it's a love for electronic music. Okay. At, at some level, no matter whether it be 
the hardest of the hard, which would be like drum core or something crazy. There's so many genres, I don't even know and what drum core down is. down to like EBM, like goth music yeah, and stuff okay. like that. I mean, that's gonna be the most successful and the most that everybody remembers the most of, because whether it's been made fun of or it's been taken serious, <laughs> right. it's like everything from SNL to, to like something as serious as like somebody like say we into Comedy in Christ. Scene. Yeah. So we know those people. Yeah, yeah. Totally. so I mean, <laughs> it's, it's the embodiment of taking that which has always been done and just kind of trying to elevate it do it our way and which i think everybody tries to do but you know just like anybody else i think our our unique spin on it is cool very cool very cool which um who are your influences music wise i've listened Obviously. to pretty much everything i mean you, you can go down the list of say uh, daft punk jay-z kanye west just on that side of things whereas electronic music uh, uh, rock wise uh, why am i drawing a blank now <laughs> that means it was a good There There's just so many of them. Yeah, yeah, she Bob was at that Dylan. party last night. Bob Dylan, nice for sure. Dylan. I feel like I've seen you like five times this week already. Yeah. Really, it was like two. Because we, we party. Three times. Spring break. <laughs> Woo! Party town. Uh-huh. Yeah, Daft Punk is amazing. Um, yeah, what, what about you guys? Who are your influences? Right. Um, my main influences uh, across the board with anything is probably going to be like Tom Waits, Danzig. Really? Ministry. Wow. Um... Etta James, uh, Howlin' Wolf. Soulful music. Soulful music. That, okay. That's just my style, my take. And I mean, if, if anybody's ever been to any show or any band that I've been in, there's always a hint of blues or something that I'm always doing. That's cool. That's always just been my take on, on guitar. But I've always been one that's like, okay, well, I know what they did. I want to go and mangle it up and just totally fuck it up and just see what comes out of it. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Then that's why there's a trash can. Very cool. <laughs> so... Awesome, what about you? Uh, I have a wide variety of influences, but I guess like my main influences would be like electronic or electronic rock bass, like Nine Inch Nails, and then like I really like Aphex Twin, uh, Bjork, it's one of oh, my yeah. like, favorite female artists. Um, but I also <laughs> like grew up playing classical guitar, so I like Andrew Segovia and like John Williams. And I also like jazz, like Jacko Pastorius, like Herbie Hancock. So I like it all. Like, Herbie Hancock. I always I go through different phases, forever. so it's never like my favorite bands when I was a teenager. Like <laughs> when I was a teenager, like it was typo negative, you know. And then it was like nice cool. nails and uh -huh. like skinny puppy. But like now it's more like I don't even know anymore. Like maybe of Montreal or like Word. Devo or Devo. I, I love I Devo. Through, like weird phases. Yeah. Ray, That's good the stuff. The knife. Oh, the I mean, knife but is good. you know, if anything, I, I think what was it? Me and me and Richard will listen to Jay Z. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll listen to Kanye West. We'll listen to like Wiz Khalifa. Too, too. It's good though to yeah. have that variety. I think I think that's the advantage of, especially when we went to California. That was one of the advantages we felt coming from Texas because it, it is such a melting pot mm -hmm. that you do get the influences of everything from like Tejano, blues, German music, polkas. Especially like with the internet, I think more people are yeah. finding out that these genres they never were interested in, like there are good artists in those genres that they're interested in. Mm -hmm. And now oh, yeah. they're like, oh, well now I like it all too. So. Yeah, like lately I've been in on a country kick. Oh yeah? Yeah, like a real bad country kick. I got into country for a while, it was really sad, but it made me feel better for I some like reason. Like Johnny Sash. No, it was uh, the one. The, <laughs> <Whiskey> the, drink. <laughs> Patsy Cline. No, um. Garth Brooks. Is that what you're It was saying? like Kenny Chesney type 20. stuff, yeah, you know. Yeah. But I've, well, I've been listening to Kenny Chesney. Some of the songs Chesney, are catchy, man. Blake Shelton, Miranda okay. Lambert. Uh, what was it? The, this album that I got turned on to was uh, Pistol Annie's. Uh, like their new release, it's uh, Miranda Lambert and these two other girls from country music. Mm -hmm. I, remember, I primarily know Miranda Lambert because of Blake Shelton. So okay. His life. But that album's dope. Like it's it's That's attitude. It's kind of like now. it's kind of like if Reba McIntyre was raised by like Shania Twain yeah. and like listened to Patsy Cline and they like drank with Johnny Cash. That's basically what that album sounds like. Okay. It's kind of attitude girl driven. Man, it's awesome. It all. The last country song I heard had like Nelly on it or something like that. <laughs> That'll it happen. So, People do so collab. It's basically another form of pop music. Now. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. Okay, listen, now I have a question. Um, if you guys could cover any song, what would it be? Do you guys do well, covers? I'm, I'm, Does Guild do, yeah, do covers? Yeah, the last one we did was a TV on the radio's Wolf Like Me. I love that song. That's, that was my, our jam, our pump-up jam. Yeah. In the middle of our set, and just, oh, rage mm -hmm. mode. I, well, I'm doing some right now, yeah. so. I mean, I'm doing my own side project, Rivers, Rivers Want, and I'm doing a Fever Ray's uh, 
Keep the Shoots Empty for me. Also, Doing It Right, from that new Death Punch yes. album. Oh, that's my favorite one. I played that one. And uh, I'm, we're, might be missing the version of All Along the Watchtower. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, inspired from what BSG. It was in Battlestar Galactic yeah. style. Okay. Just because we heard it hey, on hey, there so much. Hey, there, put so. Dylan inside a sci fi movie, I'm there. So, oh, we're kind of cosplay. I love hearing yeah. covers that sound totally different, but it's good. You yeah. know what I mean? That's, going back to typo negative, that's like what they <laughs> that's what they did. Sometimes. Wow. Summer Breeze? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's yes. The, I know what you yeah. did last summer. Yeah, uh, I had that soundtrack. Yeah, Cinnamon Girl. Uh, Cinnamon Girl was yeah. still like this one. Uh, yeah. uh, the other one from uh, Hedwig. Hedwig. I never saw that yeah. movie. It's, it's just cool. I heard good things. Though. Angry Inch. Angry Inch. That's what they covered that. Oh, okay. So where, where do you guys perform? Uh, we've been in lo locally or? Yeah, I mean. Uh, yeah, we've been in Coroba, we've been to Oak Hill Tavern. What is the other place we played? Rock Bottom Bar before it yeah. was November? What was the place that collapsed? I can't remember. I know we did, didn't we do Zombies at one point? We did do Zombies at one point. Yeah. We did Zombies. Uh, White Rabbit we played at before, I yeah. played at Communion back in the day. Oh, I remember Communion. I mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we're, we're, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. we're old school Sam's guys. Sam's Bird Joint was my first show of, ever. Tons first of bars, ever. tons of places. I mean, we yeah. yeah. ran the gamut Rabbit. of okay. most of the venues around here. They got a zip code, here. we'll play it. Very Sunset cool. Station. Do you have any uh, performances coming up? Any shows? As of right now, uh, we may do some like electronic kind of acoustic sets just to kind of tease and show off and test some of the waters. Because I mean, for the second album, we've got a total of what, about 18, 18 songs? 13. 13? 13. 13 and we've whittled it down. But yeah. we're trying to see what's going to really work for us. Like, what, what are the crowd pleasers? Okay. What, what we like to play. And then, like, of course, what's going to help cement the vision of what we got going on for the album. Yeah, those shows will be like, surprise! Yeah. So, someone shared me, uh, shared on my Facebook, um, like a music video. Do you guys have a, or who made that? There was a music video that I saw of one of your oh, songs. Oh, like Failure to Communicate? Yes, I think yeah, that was it. Yeah, 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 that one's on our um, YouTube page, youtube.com slash guild offline. Okay. That's where you can find that. Very cool. And do you guys have a guild movies. Facebook page? Totally. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, yeah. Just type in guild, we'll be there. Guild okay. offline at facebook.com. No, I think just guild. Something like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, most of those videos were all fan made. Stuff that we did in California, I stuff do. we did in Phoenix, I mean, stuff we did here in San Antonio. Uh, when we were living in California, we went back and forth, like once or twice, uh -huh. to just kind of flex our wings a bit and push the album when we first let it out. And then after that, we kind of came back and we are like, okay, what are we gonna do now? And then uh, the recession hit really bad in Cali, so that's why we ended up ultimately state coming back. Broke. Yeah. State yeah, the state broke. went really broke. Man. And in California, you're either rich or you're broke. Yeah. Pretty much. Or you wow. drive for four hours <laughs> to, to every day <laughs> to go to work. Because it was like, I mean, most people's commutes were like, say if you lived in West Covina, it was about an hour and a half, two hour drive to like where we were working at Disney and Knott's Berry. And then you drove after your eight hour shift, like an hour and a half, two hours back home. And so by the time you got home, it was like, it was dark when you left and it was dark when you got back. So oh, man. it's like, that's what everybody's kind of used to there. And it's like, if, if you're used to it, that's fine. But for me, I'm like, mm. That's the reason why they let people smoke weed over there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> definitely. And why they sell what, hard liquor in, in the yeah. grocery stores. Oh, sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> liquor or whatever you want it in the yeah, grocery store. Yeah, like till two in, the two in the morning. Yeah, something like that. Some places. Yeah. Depends on the life. It's not Vegas yeah. still, though. Yeah. Andy's just lip. walk in. <laughs> that's my favorite thing in Vegas, going to a grocery store, walking outside with a beer, looking at that cop that's standing out there and just... <laughs> yes. They deliver? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Oh, that's that. right, they deliver. They like, deliver, they, man. Like I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. so it's not just in movies, it's true. No, it's true. Well, now what was it? I, I've seen, because I, like, I watch some of the YouTube shows and stuff, and they were talking about, like, oh, well, you can order a glass of milk and some cookies now. Like, what? you're effed up. Yeah, and Very I was like, cool. that's that's awesome. Uh, <laughs> America, the land of hedonism. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> oh, he's this bottle. <laughs> Bring me some more grapes, please. Yes. <laughs> you, you guys have any side projects? Like, you're in uh, Neckbolt, aren't yeah, you? Okay. Yeah. Um, my Neckbolt stuff, um, I've been working on it for quite a while. It's actually probably as old as Emily's, going way back. Uh, and even before that, I had little things that I messed with. But it's become more and more where it's like, I've been wanting to slowly put it out. And so I've, I've played a couple shows here and there just to kind of test the waters and see how people were going to like it. Because I, I was always working with other people. Mm -hmm. And these are basically the songs that I wrote that I didn't let anybody else touch for fear of like, oh, you know, when you're a songwriter, you're kind of like, oh, this is my baby. 
I'm gonna yeah. hold on to this and I don't know if, if they're gonna take care of it right. But after a while you kind of realize that Smash you're bit, just like any normal kid, mm -hmm. you're, you're they're not gonna get anywhere, they're not gonna grow, they're not gonna do anything unless you let them go. So that's been kind of my thing. Now, I've been slowly embracing the idea of letting go and and just seeing how people react to it. Art's never finished, it's only abandoned. Exactly. <laughs> and I don't want to abandon any of my babies purposely, so. Okay. So I've decided, okay, you get off the farm, go earn a living. Get something. out of here. <laughs> get out of here. One of your kids is going to get me some iTunes money, and this will be good. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way I kind of see it. Very cool. So with, with Guild, um, what is your setup like? Do you have a, like synthesizers, or when you perform live, like what, you, what all? It's been, like, we have Frank on guitar, obviously I'm doing the singing, and we have uh, Christopher Robin, or Booty, he's on drums, oh, and okay. Brandon Lynch. Uh, he's um, on bass. Oh, we, we met him case. last night. He's yeah, at the yeah, art yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, okay, totally. yeah. When his pale blue and the uh, creature from the drain artwork. Yes, yeah. He, he's gonna want to shout out, so I did that. Um, I told him. I told him your name <laughs> sounds like a band name. I was like, we're Brandon Lynch. You Brandon know? Lynch. <laughs> oh yeah, no, he's always loved that. He sucks it up. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's, like, he's a cool oh, guy. No, cool last <laughs> name. Awesome name. Yeah, it's like, oh man, I want a cool last name too. But, but yeah, um, what were we talking about? Um, How many members? Oh yeah, yeah the, the band members. Yeah. Uh, oh no, yeah. I mean, I've played synthesizer on stage, and our new iteration. I think we'll be doing a little bit more of that, like live tweaking via Ableton, mm -hmm. things like that. Lights are important too. Yeah, yeah. Our production is uh, going to definitely be stepped up. I like that you guys have like a light show thing going on. Donna the Phoenix had that too when I saw. Uh, well, you were at Oak Hills that at Donna yeah, the Phoenix's like, first show. Yeah, I did the opening for him. Okay, yeah. yeah. But were you, was that neck bolt? Just you by yourself with the guitar and... So far it is just by myself. Um, primarily, like, the people that help me out uh -huh. behind the scenes would be, like, John Brown. Okay. John Brown's, like, one of my, my main go-to guys whenever I'm like, I got this idea. And he'll be like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> or he'll be like, do that again. And I'm like, all right. Very cool. And my brother... Uh, does a lot of mixing, does mm -hmm. a lot of producing, and he's also my fallback guy. Richard's helped me out on some newer tracks that I've kind of experimented on. Okay. He's helped me kind of do this kind of, he's been trying to help me bring out a little bit more of this kind of a the inner Dirty Fringy? South oh. mixture of electronic. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so like, it, like think of like Dirty South hip hop and mix it with like blues. Yeah, hmm. that's basically what I'm, I'm messing with with him. Like those go together. Perfectly. And so it's like to me, I'm like, I'm gonna keep experimenting till something works mm -hmm. and then I'll just sell the shit out of it. Very cool. <laughs> awesome. Just like every other good artist. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you like that? I can do it again. <laughs> <laughs> For a fight. For a fight, yeah. yeah that's awesome, man. How much, uh, okay, so your new album that's coming out, what's the name of it? Do you have a name for uh, it? Pages Torn for my Robot Manifesto. That's a long name. It's a very long name. It is Where did it come but from? But it's a, uh, very it, It's come from this whole idea of all the songs that I'm writing on this one are much more personal, I think. Honestly, now, just because I've been through a lot of turmoil since that record kind of thing, so I had a whole other life to capture. And a lot of it, it's kind of just my beliefs and views disengaged instead. Disengaged at one point. Yeah, disengaged in this one, song, that one. But you have like, all these things just put together, so it ended up being, it's kind of like opening up a diary and being like, okay, well here's this, and here's this, and here's this. And since my brain is kind of a, kind of an amalgamation of science fiction meets music kind of thing, pages torn my robot manifesto. Very and cool. once you see the album artwork and all that and hear the intros and outros, it's gonna make a lot of sense. When do you think that'll be out? That'll be It'll out. be out this year. Okay. It'll definitely be out this year. Definitely be out this year. Yeah, we're just looking, we're just finishing up mixing. That's probably what we'll do as soon as we leave here. And we will uh, get back to you on that one. Will the sunglasses come with the new album? Because I really like your sunglasses. <laughs> I'd like to uh, borrow they'll, them. They'll be, be sunglasses I kinda in a do, different form. I kind of want to do 3D sunglasses. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. We, we've got some ideas of weird stuff we want to do for the show and see see what works. Because yeah. ultimately, the dream is Bonnaroo, Burning Man, <laughs> Coachella, Man. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah I get it. <laughs> that, that, that's actually the, the sound and the thing that we've kind of dreamt of. We're like, okay, we, we've played bars. We're veterans of bars and clubs. I'm like, what is the next step up? And it's like, what are we going to shoot for? And it's like, well, everybody dreams of playing in front of 10,000, 5,000, 20,000, 30,000. I mean, everybody wants to see that sea of people jumping and moving around and singing with your songs. So yeah, that'd be that's, awesome that's to hear people dream. singing your song. It's like, I like, want that. It's an awesome mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I need to have that. Even if it's just one time, it's like, dude, that that'll be the sickest show we ever do. <laughs> Does it make you mad whenever you hear like a one-hit wonder and everyone knows the words to it and you're like, oh, man, no. like, really? it doesn't make you mad? No, no, not especially, well, like, the one-hit wonder I used to be the whole cliche thing. Mm -hmm. It was like, oh, he's just a one-hit wonder. 
Like, did you realize his lifestyle and everything changed from that one hit? And yeah, he had to live it up for like 20 years, but his life was better for it. Mm-hmm. I, and if anything, nowadays, the one hit wonder is the thing to aim for. Like yeah. I said, yeah. iTunes money. It's like, yeah, give right. me one my hits iTunes money. No hits. Yeah, it's true. Sure. It's and also, true. like, a good song is a good song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Simple as that. I know people like to say, oh, I don't like, you know, Kanye West, he's a douchebag. And I don't like Justin Bieber. I'm like, hey, those songs kind of get people they are. tapping They get stuck in your head. It, you know? Yeah. yeah. A song is something that walks well, by itself. The cool thing about being an artist is, like, any kind of publicity ends up being good publicity. Yeah. So, like, the people that hate him and the people that love him, they all contribute to the star power of the artist. Okay. I have no a, photos. I have a perfect no example photos. of this, which was a uh, Dion Word. Oh, little yeah, little South like, yeah. African hip hop group nobody heard of, you know, forever kind of thing. They have one song. What was it the first single they did? Into, Into the Ninja. Into the Ninja, and it's such a weird video. You know, Yolanda Visa all dressed up like a little girl, and him just looking like a monster and whatnot. I haven't heard that. I haven't heard <laughs> yeah. that. But uh, yeah, they blew up overnight and it was awesome. Cause I went to go see them at the first U.S. show at Coachella, mm-hmm. and I was just in the audience, and nobody knew who they were. And, they, and except for like maybe a few handful of people, because they were in the dance tent where you usually see Dead Mouse the night after, things like that. So people, were like, mm, what's going on here? But then I saw them in uh, on Halloween, I think two years ago. Mm-hmm. And by then they'd already released their second album. And when the crowd just started going, <laughs> <laughs> he just stood there and just so, took it in, and, and you could see it in his face. He was like, "That's what I've been working for." Mm-hmm. And yeah. every artist wants to have that experience. Hell yeah! yeah. I saw that and I was like. Bravo. Yeah, they're the, like the punk rock yeah. of Zef side kind of rap hip hop. Yeah, that's cool. I haven't heard it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the other right. thing is like you know you get to like have that triumphant moment, you know, despite your naysayers, and that comes up in D Antwoord's music too. But it's something that like every artist deals with. Like people are like, oh, you're not good enough, or like it doesn't sound good to me, so you shouldn't make it, or whatever. So there's lots of people you gotta deal with like that. Yeah. The more haters you have, the better you're doing. I believe that. I believe you have one hitter, try to figure out how to get two more. Two more. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Kat Williams. You're full of the one liners today. I'm liking all the stuff you're of, saying. A lot of quotes. Yeah, a lot of quotes. <laughs> <laughs> Any closing thoughts, gentlemen, for the people out there watching? Please listen to our music on iTunes. It's iTunes Guild. You can find us. And we'll be coming to you shortly. You can find us on our YouTube page. Our YouTube page. They'll be coming to you and coming on you (laughs) with their music. That's right. And uh, you can find my music as well online at (laughs) willgannon.com. It's my logo. I don't know if you can see the card. It's probably too far away. Let's pretend. Technology. You know, they'll zoom in or something. (laughs) You know. We'll take a picture uh, of it. Uh, <laughs> what about you, Put in a Mr. Link Frankie? You know. <laughs> Actually, yeah, you big... can go to www.neckbolt.com. Very cool. All right, what do you guys think of this picture? It's hot. That poor, poor penis. It needs wheels. It was drawn by Matt Hole of Peachfish, and I just, that was my little uh, smile. It didn't look there. angry like, enough. He loves the dick. Oh. Well, I mean, Damn. it's off centered of the shaft. It should have been angry because it's displaced. Matt Hole is a shaft. I just want to. <laughs> <laughs> You're a shaft, Matt Holm. All right, cool. Well, thanks for hanging out with us. Guild yeah. slash. Well, again. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good morning. <laughs>